All right, ladies and gents, a little update. Um, we got that seal installed. Um, I was able to tap around it. This would be only if you saw the last video. I was able to tap around it um, enough to um, basically grab it with a pair of uh, needle nose pliers or needle nose vice grips, and then I was able to kind of pry it out. The old one rammed in, um, not rammed in, but um, let's see here. I was meant to say jammed in or whatever, but as I'm saying it, don't jam it in. <laughs> don't ram it in. Be very careful because it's a very thin seal. So I used one that was um, where the, the outer edge fit this circumference perfectly inside the outer diameter and of course, um, away from the square and then it just bottoms out. So anyway, so we've got this electrical motor uh, torqued. I went to put a thin layer of silicone on each side of the cork gasket just as a safety. Not necessary, but my uh, goal with working on stuff is I don't, I don't ever want to see it again. Meaning until something breaks, I don't want things to come back because something's leaking or moisture is getting through there. So next on the list is uh, putting the lift ram assembly in. This is ready to go besides uh, just making sure it's clean. I just got this, the jam nut all cleaned up. I'm gonna install the wiper in there. I'm gonna install the new packing on this. We're gonna lower the set in there. Of course with the washer first. Um, and then that will be set. And then we will um, connect the lower um, the lower mount and seal here, and then the all the various plugs, and then of course, last but not least, our four-way valve assembly that has been patiently waiting. So, but there you go, guys. This has been a good little project. Here's our lift valve. Here, can, here, can you hear it? Here. Well. I can feel it moving back and forth. Originally, I could hear it. I'm sure the ATF, it's that kind of swirled around. It's kind of getting soaked in. So anyway, over now, we're gonna get back to work. All right, gang, we are going to attack the, um, lower area here. This is gonna be, um, very simple. We got a plug on the far right. We got the anchor O-ring mount plug, and then we got the actual drain plug, as well as, um, Oh, this is an expansion plug. Okay, cool. So, you know, aluminum and any metal will expand with the hot and cold. So, with this is the same thing, the one over here. When this thing expands and contracts. It needs somewhere to flex on. So, this is probably a, a brass plug, some sort of a soft, uh, a strong, soft metal. If that makes any sense. And uh, it's able to kind of absorb. So, again, I'm not going to record it live, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this up. We're going to install that back, get all of our plugs in there, and then um, turn it around and get this uh, four-way valve. Listen, man, it is snowing, or it was snowing. It's not a big deal. <laughs> but we're on the home stretch. I'm getting excited. Um, whoop. Oops, phone just about fell off here. Soon I want to get like a GoPro. It's gonna be so cool when I can do that. Thanks for tuning in, y'all. Have a good night. All right, guys and gals, we are all set with the lower end here. We've got our uh, plug for the uh, four-way valve manifold area. We've got our main drain plug and we've got our bottom anchor 
mount with the o-ring all tightened up we've got her nice and snug and the next thing on the list is getting this um, four-way valve cleaned up so here we go all right ladies and gents we've got our lift ram assembled our motor pump our three-way lift valve they call it good to go the bottom end scoot about <laughs> scoot about plug drain plug uh, basically a galley plug whatever you call it bottom mount with o-ring ready to go mm. and we're going to now switch to a time lapse of me we're gonna clean up this, what is called the four-way valve manifold. There's a uh, paper gasket on the back, two O-rings. The paper gasket is there to kind of shim, shim up the right uh, situation there. It's a weird thing though. And then on the front side here, we have our pentagonal shaped uh, shuttle valve or whatever you would call it um, it is literally the four-way valve it allows fluid to go two ways this way and two ways that way so I'm gonna very carefully clean all this up I'm not gonna I'm gonna be very careful around this machine area here um, as you can see you can actually see the imprint of where the the four-way valve rests so, this is almost like a camshaft journal or what have you. You want to make sure you install things back how they are. They're machined. So I'm not going to get too crazy with cleaning, you know, past here. I'm going to get the threads out and then I'm going to blow through each little hole here. And, and I hope to see a lot of junk coming out of this area. I'll report on that later. Brass plugs go in here. The two cushion valves for the left and right side go in here. So I actually have a lot of cleanup to do on this alone. And then once this is clean, we'll be able to um, continue on with cleaning up this unit, which obviously gets right on that bad boy. Um, this is gonna be a lot easier to clean up than this, but. And if, if this was a situation where this needed to get on the road as soon as possible, I would not be I would not be as meticulous as I, as I'm being. So none of this stuff is emergency. This is you know it's our plow truck. I've had this truck for three years. It's a great truck. Um, so first time going through the setup, this is going to be all completely rebuilt once we're done. So it'll last quite a while cool too and learn a lot this little unit they sell this part and this part all together this whole setup bolt-on for $730 so that's why I was so worried about this plug coming out <laughs> I was like okay well this isn't cheap but you know it is what it is guys and gals I, re I recommend a brass um, brass wire brush to clean some of this up. So I'm gonna get to work. It's time lapse time. All right, ladies and gents, um, we are ready to basically install our cushion valves and our brass plugs, um, and then pretty much ready to bolt that manifold onto the pump body. 
And then we'll clean up the, uh, the four-way valve um, assembly there. And the goal is to be ready to tomorrow pull in the plow truck and, ins and install the pump on the front end of the vehicle and get this thing rocking and rolling. Nice retainer need. Last run to your garage. All right, ladies and gents, we are going to um, we'll get this thing finished up. Um, we got the rest. Uh, we'll see the other side of the valves later when we're installing the cables. But basically, got the uh, upper and lower mounts done. Right now, I'm going to clean up the electrical connections and get those all connected. And then, last but not least, get the cables hooked up. Then we'll go down here and. and get the lift, get the rams um, hooked up. And I'll probably, if I can, I'm gonna do my best to fill those with ATF before, so there's not just a huge amount of uh, air sitting in there. And then of course the fluid will have to make its way from the re reservoir through the lines. And there'll be a little bit of uh, you know, bleeding to be done, but just praying that uh, this works and there shouldn't be any other issues with it besides tightening up the actual plow mechanics, the, the whole apparatus that is the frame of the plow um, itself is just all pretty much worn out. It's not too bad, but there's a ton of clay. And what I'm talking about is this here. There's just a ton of clay in, you know, it should be a little bit tighter. So it just adds for, it just makes for a sloppy, you know, plow movement where it's things are swaying around while you're driving. And anyway, it's not too bad. I'll glue a time lapse and we will um, get her done here. Basically getting these, uh, there's two O-rings on the cables that need to be changed. And then I'm going to, I pretty much know which one's which, but I'll make sure of course. And then get them stabbed in there. Kind of uh, get a base just to kind of tighten it up and just see. I'll actually, I don't know if I'll be able to do that on my own. I don't have, it, have anybody here to move the joystick so I can look at it. I'll probably want to do that. So I'll get the cables hooked up and then I'll go ahead and transition to getting the angle ram or the, uh, the angle rams installed Whoops. and getting the actual uh, plow hooked back up to the truck. And then when I, uh... <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, okay. Once my wife gets home, I'm gonna have her help me so I can, I wanna basically look. Well, I don't know. I might just hook it all up because it's 
gonna squirt fluid when she does that, unless I, I could just disconnect the, the line. I'll probably disconnect the wires, it just depends. My goal here is to hook it up and everything works great. You know, I'll probably have to fine tune the cables. I might have to fine tune the lift valve, but we're just praying that this thing moves up and down, holds up, you know, raises and lowers at a good speed. And then of course, angles left to right. Not only, you know, number one, that it actually does that. And then two, um, at the right speed, it should be four seconds sweeping side to side, and then two seconds to get the thing up in the air and down, I think. Just depends. So anyway, I'm gonna put on time lapse. I'm gonna get all this stuff finished up. All right, ladies and gents, we are all set. Um, I'm done for the night. Um, it's, it's actually 1.30 in the morning here. And uh, I'm gonna need a helper to come out tomorrow to wanna make sure that my cable adjustment is good to go, or I at least have a visual on the movement. Um, and I wanna do that before I actually operate the uh, Pump, but once we get that done, I'll get, I'll get more um, filming done to actually, and it's really good news because I was able to move this blade back and forth by myself. Before we couldn't do that. I think the original, one of the main, main issues is this left cylinder ram froze up and just got bound up. Pressure blew the line because it took the cushion valve's rated for like 1300 PSI. The line probably could only hold, you know, eight, 900, a thousand, who knows. So the line blew instead of the cushion valve going out, so. But also we found all that garbage inside that pump. So this thing is fully uh, rebuilt. Let's walk around here. <clears throat> Backside there, and got the lift, the uh, everything disconnected, including the ground, because I'm gonna have my wife come out and actually operate the joystick, and of course I don't want to activate the pump, so I got everything kind of disconnected and ready to go. But I'm excited. Um, this has been quite the project. That's my uh, filming setup. You know, the more light, the better, but. Truthfully, in any mechanical, excuse me, any, anything mechanical you're doing, one of the, your most primary tools is a really good light, a really good bright light, because light sheds a lot of light <laughs> on a subject, meaning a lot of times you can't really see what you're, you can't really figure out what, what you're looking at, you know, if you're doing one of these things where... I think, yeah, I think something's leaking down there. I'm not sure, you know? So the difference is when you can actually, of course, I'm only doing that with the uh, exposure thing. You get the picture. You need a good, solid light, so. Good news, this choke setup worked great yesterday when I pulled it in, because last night, this battery is on its way out, so this is like a three year, getting to be four years old, I guess. So that's, anytime a battery is older than three years, you know, don't be surprised if it does go bad, it shouldn't, really. It should last at least five years, but, you know, intense conditions, but I'm gonna take the charger off it. But this choke, I started up last night. The battery died before it started, so I hooked up the charger, hooked up the block heater for like 30 minutes. Went out there, 
cranked it twice, and then boom, that choke grabbed, and it went up to fast idle, and it ran, and pretty much 30 seconds after I had it running, I moved it into here, and then shut it off. So I'm very impressed, because the manual choke, I couldn't, I couldn't pull it off. Um, you know, it is what it is. Um, it's an interesting, still, the choke light that originally went on you seen the episode that light doesn't come on anymore <laughs> I'm thinking the ball was burnt out so I still need to look at this uh, wiring here and make sure that's a solid you know 12 volts ignition on which I believe it is but that light goes through the oil pressure solenoid um, and if the oil pressure solenoid doesn't give, doesn't complete the circuit, the choke won't set and it won't start. So it's almost like a fail safe, but also they combine the, the circuit. So if you have an issue with your oil pressure switch, you, have, you might have an issue with your choke light. Um, but it, it's a still an interesting thing uh, figuring out how it works. So still getting her figured out. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm gonna head inside and cook the steak. Thank goodness this, wow, is good to go. Hopefully, tomorrow as we test it. I should, I was gonna paint it, but, you know, over now. All right, we're back together. Got the truck fired up. Also, uh, see, it's fluid. It just almost seems like this is seeping, but yeah, I'm just gonna say for now. Boy, until we get that sealed, sheesh. I'll try to run it in further, but if I need a new one, this thing costs 700 some odd dollars, and it's the whole unit. So, but if this doesn't work, I need to get a longer plug and just pray that. It runs because the the fluid is just getting up through those threads. So is that my dumb butt drill? Anyway, my fault, but we'll figure it out. All right, ladies and gents, uh, got our um, thanks to my dad for helping out. He uh, I dropped it off at his house, and he has this nice drill press set up. And as you can see, this is uh, an eighth inch pipe thread that's the original and the thread hole the, the parts where the drill had hit the threads there's just way too much space um, and fluid was able to escape so I've got a uh, here's, here's the um, that side and then this side will be just a tad bit bigger gotta start right at the right spot so, I'm going to clean this thing up and get it back together. I did want to explain a little bit about how it works. It's the paperwork that you can find online is a little confusing. So, here is the, um, the four-way valve here. That sits right on top of this bad boy here, right? Boom. And if you look right here, the fluid flows within this little pocket, okay? And this hole is the pressure coming from the pump. This hole goes to the uh, driver's side uh, angle ram, and this hole goes to the passenger side. 
And so when you operate the, uh, the plow left, this thing moves and basically is right on top of these two. So basically fluid is flowing from the pump through that little pocket to here. And as this side is extending, the fluid that's in the driver ram has needs somewhere to go. So this opposite side there is doing the same thing, allowing fluid from the driver's side to escape back into the reservoir here. Excuse me, so, and it can be pretty confusing when you first put it together if you don't really understand how it works. But I know that when I do, let's see here, when it is about here, um, this pocket right, right here, sorry guys, I can't only have two things. The right side pocket is right above that. You see how that works? And then neutral would be here. Neutral is supposed to be like, like this. One, two, three. And what that allows for is when uh, fluid is pumping, it's, I believe it's going straight through into the back to the reservoir. Because fluid is pumping, so it goes into this V part I believe goes underneath there. I'm not exactly sure about what happens in the neutral position. Um, possibly when you operate the lift, you know, because the only time the pump is running when this isn't turning is when it's lifting. And because the lift valve is opening up right above this, it's probably not allowing pressure to build here. But again, I'm not sure. Because if you're angling left or right and the, uh, blade raises you're supposed to adjust the lift valve out so i'm not exactly sure how this valve system works in concert with the lift valve but and of course your cushion valves here when you let's say you, you hit something with the right side of the plow and it mm, suddenly you got tons of fluid pressure back feeding this cushion valve i, I believe it's this one Basically, um, I think the fluid basically allows this to open and the fluid races through here and I believe goes to the other side. Like it, it can escape down through this side and just, you know, escape through the reservoir. I'm not exactly sure, but so if, it, if it's still giving me trouble, the first thing I'm gonna make sure is that um, I've bled out the system, which I haven't really had a lot of information on that either. I'm just going to carefully manipulate the plow um, to bring fluid into the cylinders. I'm not sure. I really don't know how I'm going to do that. But, um, and then number one, make sure these are adjusted. The book I have says basically bottom, bottom the spring out. And then, um, I need to demagnetize these. Um, bottom the spring out and then back it out a quarter, a, a turn and a quarter. And what that allows for is some movement against that spring. And it's set for, you know, 3,000 PSI. I have no idea, but there's, there's more information on that if you need it. So anyways, I'm going to get to work. Hope this thing, I can get this thing fired up tonight.